there is no greater advocate on the state Supreme Court uh, for uh, the rights of the accused. Maybe that explains why so many prosecutors have endorsed my opponent here. Historically, I believe Mr. Wiggins has, has opposed judicial elections in favor of appointments. That's what he's told me in the past. I've gone to some of his forums and, and expressed my point of view on that, which is the opposite, I believe, in, in free and open elections. Uh, talking about getting politics out of it, it, it's really impossible. There are great things about the election system. I mean, here we are having to explain ourselves, submit ourselves to you. It's a very illuminating experience from both sides of this table, and it's a very humbling experience. I was uh, admonished, that's the, lower, the lowest sanction, for not uh, an impropriety, but for the appearance of impropriety. After a fact-finding hearing, the commission issued its decision <coughs> holding that Justice Sanders violated canons 1 and 2A, but did not violate canon 3A4, end of quote. So the two canons that he violated were not just the appearance of impropriety. One was, the other was uh, a different canon altogether. I counted as a vote for the lawyer and against the uh, against lawyer discipline if you vote against the recommendation by the disciplinary board and vote for a lesser discipline. A good example is the case we were just talking about, the lawyer who molested a child. You voted for suspension instead of disbarment. That's a vote for the lawyer and against, con uh, against uh, discipline. I know that going into these elections, that every time I vote to uphold the rights of a criminal defendant, someone on the other side is going to use that and say, oh, Sanders is soft on crime or this and that. But the truth is, Sanders believes strongly enough in your constitutional rights and all of your other legal rights to stand up for you, even if he has to stand alone. I'm not trying to accuse or attack Justice Sanders for being soft on crime. What I'm saying is there's a bias here in this decision making on not just the criminal cases, but also on the other side of things, on the disciplinary cases. When we talk about the Washington State Supreme Court, I think we should remember that we just take every case as it comes. Uh, we have to make sure that the rights of every litigant are respected in the court. It doesn't matter who the litigant is. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter how popular or unpopular they may be. It certainly shouldn't matter uh, whether we think it's going to make it easier to get reelected or not uh, to vote on one side or another of these cases. There's just one question, and that is upholding legal rights. Justice Sanders takes issue with the things I have said about him, and particularly statistical things that I have said about him, but he's just nibbling around the edges. He's not really going to the heart of the matter, and he's not talking about or acknowledging the significance of the particular problems I'm talking about. To uh, make some distinction in a, in a case, some minor distinction, it really doesn't change the heart of the matter. There's a problem when you say that a lawyer who has molested an 11-year-old client should not be disbarred. There's a problem when you are opposed to any form of campaign finance reform, as Justice Sanders is. Thank <laughs> you.